have a Detroit, Michigan man straight across the uh, table from me right there. Um, I, I, I would just, I, I would keep to Detroit, Michigan man, but I think it would really get him upset. <laughs> <laughs> I am a Detroit, but, Michigan man. But you see, that's, you, but that's accurate. Jerome Bettis. That is accurate. But you, you say it fast. I'll just say that he's it for me. You know, sometimes. In this business, uh, Jerome, as I know you're you're in the television uh, broadcasting business as well, sometimes um, you pronounce the comma by pausing, right? Like, for instance, way back in the day when Pat Summerall used to do a promotion for Murder, She Wrote, he, he would say, Murder, She Wrote, because there's a comma in between Murder and She. There is a comma between Detroit and Michigan, so you're a Detroit, Michigan man. I'm, Good to I'm see you from here. Detroit, Michigan. <laughs> yes, I am. I am from Detroit, Michigan. And there's a there's a sign uh, in television for fluff. You know, there's a fluff sign. You know, <laughs> what, just, what like, sign is that? Fluff, stretch, like stretch. stretch. It, you know, just yes. just fluff. Yes. that's exactly all that was. It was just all a bunch of fluff because. Yes. You don't want to make it seem as though you're yes. trying to imply that <laughs> I am a Michigan man. I know you're not, although I you are from there. from I mean, the state of Michigan. How did you wind up at Notre I Dame? Am, how did you wind up at Notre Dame? How because did that happen? I, I knew it was the best place in the world to have gone to school <laughs> and i was close to making a very bad decision did you um, almost go to michigan i did i almost go to michigan so who was it was it gary moeller who so, tried to so, try to get you there? so so story, right? i will tell you the story okay oh, i'll give you the full story <laughs> oh, for once yes. right okay. which i never would ever consider doing but because you gave me the fluff early we'll go we'll, we'll go there. <laughs> we'll go there. yes jb so I am being recruited out of high school, uh, the number one recruit in the state of Michigan. Uh, at the time, Bo Schimbeckler is still the head coach. Okay, so it's Bo. Okay, so we go Christmas. Yes. He decides he's going to retire on Christmas Eve. I remember this. Yeah. I, I covered it. I, I was yeah. there at the I, Michigan yeah. Daily. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So Christmas Eve, he decides he's going to retire. Well, he goes to see one last recruit. Before he retires. And that is? And that recruit is the number one tailback in the country that year. His name was Ricky Powers. I remember. From Ohio. So I am a kid in Detroit. I'm the number one fullback in the country. He's the number one tailback in the country. When Bo Schembechler goes to see him the, the night before he retires, it really told me the hierarchy of the recruiting process, who was more important. Clearly, this guy was the number one tailback in the country. Michigan is a tailback, was tailback you kind yeah, of, of course, that, that, that kind of deal. So I knew at that point uh, what the deal was. Then Gary Moeller comes in. Then they, 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 they really wanted me to play linebacker because I was the number two linebacker in the country, right? the number one fullback, but the number two linebacker. And they wanted me to be the starting inside linebacker at Michigan. And I wanted to play running back. And so then they came up with this plan that they're going to play me like Leroy Horde, um, sure. more of a fullback tailback type. But I knew all along that Ricky Powers was coming to Michigan and he's the number one tailback. He's going to get the ball. And ultimately that was was really the basis of my decision in terms of uh, really looking at Notre Dame very, very seriously because their offense was based around the, the fullback position, not the tailback position. So it became an offense that really fit me perfectly because they – when they went to three wide receivers, the fullback stayed in the game, the tailback left the game. So there was a lot of things that they did with the fullback that nobody else did. Um, and so that really, once that happened, then it pushed me uh, at uh, towards Notre Dame and looking that? at the, uh, the school. So what you're saying is that in terms of pissing you off about not believing in who you believed yourself to be, this, the Rams were not the first to do that. <laughs> no, I, it, it, I wasn't that, pissed. I wasn't sounds pissed. Like you, I knew the reality of it. I was a fullback. He was a tailback. No. In their tailback university, I got it's, it. No. So, so I, I wasn't pissed. I wasn't pissed at Michigan because I knew it, 
they wanted me to play linebacker. They didn't even want me to play running back. That's why it was such a big thing sure. for them to go after this guy. So that told me, okay, they don't want me to play running back. They right. want me right. to play linebacker. And I knew that, but it was one of those oh, things yeah. where it, my heart was set on playing fullback because my dad was 5'10". I knew I wasn't going to be a 6'2". Right. Uh, inside linebacker. So it really, I knew I was going to be undersized to try to get to the next level. Well, it all worked out. I mean, it, it did. Because the, the bottom line is, like, if you're going to have a fallback position, if you're going to have a choice B, I mean, Notre Dame's a great second choice. <laughs> no, but it was Jerome. not I mean, the second great, choice. That's a great, that's a great, <laughs> that's, that's a great, to that's a great to way to. Spin zone. Uh, uh, see, here we He's go. No, uh, more fluff. Well, how's that a spin? Here, here's spin more fluff. Zone. No, I mean, if you're going to you're gonna have a fallback position no, it and say, you know, I'll just do that. I mean, Notre Dame's a great, I'll just do that school. No, because no no the problem the problem was that the leadership was so poor in recognizing oh, oh, yeah. true talent. that is why i love jerome Beck. okay they were so poor in recognizing talent i knew that that would be the worst place for me to go because i would not be utilized to my fullest capability sure. because they don't see greatness Plus, you, your education's a lot better. Oh, Ten times. Man. Ten times. No, by the way, Ten uh, times. it's amazing how one story could be viewed at uh, from two different perspectives. <laughs> <laughs> but there's really only one perspective. There's not two. Oh, man. <laughs> this is great. We have like three minutes left all of a sudden because we went down the hole. Oh, okay. I gave oh, you the story. It's amazing. And, Thank and, you. And, and, and that's yeah. how I paid you back. I, I never really... <laughs> It's funny. I found the other day because you know I moved into a new house a few a uh, couple of years ago. I found the other day that jersey that you you signed for me as a I forget which yeah. Michigan when it was, but um, did I do I owe you something from last year? I forget. I mean, do you, I owe you something you, from last you've year? You've owed me for many years, man. No, that's not many true. Years. No, you owe me so much. You know what I mean? Be like, next you know, give me this this year. Give me that next year. I have so much stuff. <laughs> Like, okay, you know, my um, wife's like, why do you have all this rich life in the house? <laughs> well, this year, last year, the year before. So, just... It's a big October, <laughs> by the way, it's it, at the big house. It's October under the lights, middle of the season. It's not the first game. It's the middle of the season. <laughs> oh, it's going to wow. be great. I know. Yeah. So we have time, basically, in order to yeah, make this. Yes, we do. All right, so I got about a minute left. At Jerome Bettis 36 on Twitter uh, and Instagram. It's great to have you here, buddy. Thank you, man. It's always great to be on with you. And, and, and also, four years in. Four years How about that? here. Yes. Huge. Four years here, man. Yep. Um, yeah, and there's there's like a whole bunch of Hall of Famers just strolling just right down the It is special. Oh, and the one thing that um, I, I, I want to make a point to acknowledge is, you know, my classmate, uh, Junior Seau, uh, obviously he's not here. Uh, but it's it's our job as as classmates is to bring him with us everywhere everywhere we go. So when I have a moment here at the hall, I try to just uh, speak his name just so good for you. It's not he's not forgotten. And I also told this class uh, as well. They've got to do the same thing with uh, Pat Bowler. They've got to speak his name. Uh, let everybody remind people. Of, of his greatness and that he's a part of this hall. So their task uh, is to make sure we don't, uh, we don't forget the name when we're having such a great time. Well said, JB. You're good people, man. Thanks for coming on the Bye. show. Really appreciate that. That's appreciate Jerome it. Bettis right here on the Rich Eisen Show. He comes on, he presents himself, he tells a great story about once upon a time back in the day, Bo showed him the back of his hand and he said, you know what? <laughs> I'm going to Indiana. Uh, the best decision I could have ever made. Jim Kelly, hour two, <laughs> along with Matt Patricia. Don't go anywhere. For more of the Rich Eisen Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV for free on BR Live or download the Rich Eisen Show app.